After Rome, the Dark Ages came about and physical fitness took a backseat, as food was hard to come by and therefore so was the ability to live. However, after this, the period from around 1400 to around 1700, the Renaissance would see a reincarnation of Greek and Roman ideas, and therefore a reincarnation in the importance of physical fitness. Many would expound upon the ideas of fitness for competition resulting in the creation of various different sports. Horse jousts were one of the most famous of such inventions. This saw two knights riding horses trying to knock each other off with long swords known as lances. This medieval sport would not continue on into modern day, however, other sports would. It is said that the primitive form of soccer or football for my non-American viewers was invented during this time period. Another sport which saw its birth was tennis, and due to its popularity with King Henry VIII of France in the 1500s, tennis exploded. Tennis courts were built across France and eventually, and eventually Europe. During this time period, for the first time in history, books that centered around exercise began to be published. In 1553, a Spaniard by the name of Cristobal Mendez published a book titled El Libro de El Ejercicio y Sus Provechos, translated to The Exercise Book and Its Benefits. This book analyzed various different activities and gave medical advice on how to excel in such endeavors, as well as how to recover from injuries commonly associated with each activity. This book can be thought of as the ancestor of sports medicine as we know it today. Just 16 years later, an Italian doctor by the name of Mercalius would publish a book entitled De Arte Gymnastica, Gymnastic Art. This book was a culmination of all the knowledge Mercalius had accumulated in medical literature, diet, and exercise. It sought to truly understand the connection between physical exercise and health, and it strongly influenced fitness education and its development in the years that would follow. During the time period following the Renaissance, known as the National Period, individual countries began to expound upon the fitness ideas that were generated during the Renaissance. This period gave way to the invention of gymnastics by John Guts Muths and Frederick John. Gymnastics was viewed as the ultimate fitness endeavor and would eventually lead to the formation of different types from other countries. Sweden and Denmark would take the creation of the Germans and build their own forms of gymnastics. These countries became not only nationalistic about their identities, but also their fitness. The early 1900s began to give way to the fitness industry. During this time period, a man by the name Georges Herbert wrote a book entitled The Natural Method. In it, he outlined what he described as a 3-10-15 approach. This approach to physical fitness describes the three main components of fitness as physical training, mental training, and ethical training. It consists of what he called the 10 families of practical exercise, which ranged from walking to swimming. And finally, the 15 principles of training that range from proper posture to correction of weaknesses. Georges sought to combine all realms of physical fitness in order to create a good balance of all the realms. Even before George's philosophy came about, a man known as Eugene Sandow began a fitness revolution through strength sports and bodybuilding. Eugene was known throughout England and eventually the world for his amazing feats of strength and muscularity. He made money by performing such feats in front of audiences that looked on in awe. If the gladiators looked like Arnold to the Romans, then Eugene looked like Ronnie Coleman. Starting in 1897, Eugene began to publish his own magazine in which he began to advertise for what he would come for what would become to be known as the Great Competition. Eugene held various regional competitions in England, and the winners of each would be invited to the first big bodybuilding show. And in 1901, at London's Royal Albert Hall, a sold-out crowd looked on in awe at the muscular men who took the stage. Eugene Sandow had taken muscularity and given it a sport outside of strength-based feats. His muscle display shows would go on to become bodybuilding. Back in Europe, another Frenchman was popularizing fitness during this period as well. Professor Edmond Desbon would go on to popularize fitness through the invention of fitness journals. 
In these journals, he would put pictures of various strong men and bodybuilders that he photographed, inspiring those who looked at these publications to achieve similar results by engaging in physical activity. Desbond also opened various fitness clubs across Europe, where the era's great strongmen and bodybuilders were trained. At around the same time in America, a man by the name of Bernard McFadden came to prominence. Bernard could be seen as the first American fitness guru. He promoted fasting as a way to positively influence bodily functions and was a huge proponent of a minimalist lifestyle that included being in nature, exercising, and excluding processed food. Bernard completely detested white bread, meat, and most processed food. In fact, in 1902, he opened one of the first vegetarian restaurants and called it physical culture. Bernard did not seek to simply advocate for fitness or health, but was promoting his regime as doctrine. He claimed that following his advice would lead to living to the age of 150, and even advised his clients and consultants to not listen to their doctors. Bernard even attempted to found a religion based on his ideas, but it ultimately failed. These men formed the early foundation of the modern day fitness industry and were true pioneers paving the way for the industry's growth. The Roaring Twenties saw fitness take a backseat in terms of its importance. With money being less of a problem for many Americans, partying, eating, and drinking became much more important. This era saw the creation of what I would call the first fitness shams. Since many became too lazy to actually exercise, there was a hole in the market to advertise, get fit quick schemes. A machine known as a vibrating exercise belt became a hot commodity. This miracle machine claimed to burn fat and get you fit without all the effort. One ad claimed, it is this speeded up motion of your tissues, 3200 times a minute, that aids in a fast, effective spot reduction that actually helps trim down the size of your measurements wherever it embarrasses you most. Spot reduction. Ah, man. It is quite funny that people still continue to be swayed by terms like these despite how long they have been around. In 1924, the president at the time, Calvin Coolidge, saw how much fitness had taken a backseat and stated the importance of exercise since most Americans were no longer working physically demanding jobs. Following this, schools began to emphasize physical education and sports began to become a central part of the lives of many children. The importance of fitness was constantly being reinforced among the American children. In my opinion, this is not terrible, as a generation of children being taught the importance of exercise may lead to generations of people knowing its importance, as habits like physical fitness are often passed down from father to from parents to kids.